This is something that everybody believes exists and doesn't exist. Secrets of magnetism. This existed since the days of Faraday when they're sprinkling, sprinkling iron, iron filings on pieces of paper. I assume you've heard of uh, lines of force, magnetic lines of force. They're lines? Really? Fields don't have lines? Well, you can feel it if you actually stick on your headphones and you wave an electromagnet over top of a magnetic field, you'll hear scratching lines. You'll hear lines, like fibrous lines. Also, too, if you... <clears throat> Here's one example of, in a test tube I did. You can actually see the spikes, but the spikes have dips. You know what this looks like? This looks exactly like the double slit experiment where you actually get uh, interference, constructive and destructive interference. Here's uh, the, where the uh, lines of force actually originated from, and of course anybody could sprinkle iron filings over top of a magnet. You'll see these lines. Well, that's magnetic lines of force. You can also see the lines in a hypertrochoidal pattern. Hypertrochoid, kind of like a spirograph. Here's um, a, a ferrocell hold over top of a magnet. Here you can see the interlacing, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, constructive, destructive interference of a magnet over top of a supercell. Here you can see the same thing. Either one of these is the pole of a magnet, by the way. You can see the uh, same lines. Why? Those are lines of force. It has to be what that is. Well, there are no lines of force. The torus that makes up the field around a coherent magnet, it's actually a conjugate uh, magnetodielectric field of the torus representing magnetism, force of motion, and the hyperboloid representing inertia and acceleration of the dielectric. You have this conjugate interplay, or yin and yang, if you will. I'm going to actually read from <clears throat> part of my lecture and also from the fourth edition of my book, so I assume it's okay to read this since I wrote it to begin with. There are no magnetic lines of force. There are, they are not lines. These so-called lines of force pertaining to magnetism is a gross, perceptually based error and absurdity. It has absolutely no reality whatsoever. Said lines are only the peaks and troughs of the conjugate magnetodielectric system, which are mutually both manifest and anti-manifest, space and counterspace as they interplay against each other towards both the creation of space, as meant, i.e. magnetism, because that's what magnetism does, and uh, counter space in the case of the uh, hyperboloid or the hourglass shape, i.e. The, uh, the secondary conjugate or really the primary conjugate uh, magnetodielectric uh, geometry that makes up the magnet. This is simplex constructive and destructive interference patterns. These lines or force are a non-sept concept that came from Faraday in viewing iron filings above a magnet. The lines are due to constructive and destructive pressure mediation between divergent and convergent uh, force and counterforce factors that make up the magnetodielectric conjugate geometry of, in this case, the permanent magnet. Namely, the reintegrating dielectric in the case of the hyperboloid. There are no lines and forces qualified as the action of one thing upon another. The presumed magnetic lines are ether wake fronts, both two-dimensionally circular and extrapolatively curvilinear to the mass around which they're circumambulating or mediating at their own pressures and interlacing between each other. These endless wake fronts are the genesis of magnitude, which begets the measure of same, so conceptualized as time. Constructive and destructive phase due to spatial variance and or the displacement, depending on the subject observed, be it light or the magnetodielectric interlacing of a palpable magnetic field of a magnet, is the source of these presumed lines of force and or the lack thereof, where the valleys exist between the actual lines that we observe. Observance is one thing. Accurate uh, explanations of what's going on is another. Descriptions. People observe things and then they describe them, but descriptions are never explanations. The absence of light or the assumed magnetism is a destructive uh, rather than loss of self-canceling in the dielectric, which terminates, of course, in counter space. This interference is observed in the double slit experiment in the exact same manner. However, contrary to mathematicians, falsely paraded as scientists, by the way, there are no waves of light since, of course, waves are not a thing, nor is light a damn particle. Um, in the case of the double slit experiment, you don't even need a double slit. You only need a single eye, not the needle, which of course would be a bifurcated double bar, but just the bar of a needle. And you could actually have the same constructive and destructive interference patterns. So all of these things are not representing lines. They're representing out the pressure mediations which exist in the magnetodielectric conjugate field. 
Well, we see lines. Well, look, I sprinkle the iron filings and I see lines. That's the magnetic lines of force. No, the magnetism is completely uh, ex extant as a toroid around these uh, quote-unquote north and south poles. The only reason we're seeing lines and then empty spaces and lines and empty spaces is the magnetism and the dielectricity medi mediating each other's pressures out as they interlace and interweave their own pressure variances between centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. The same thing here seen underneath the ferro cell. When you see the light, you're seeing the magnetism. When you see an absence of light, like right there in the dead smack center, which is where the uh, centripetal uh, convergence point is for the dielectric, you are seeing the dielectric. That's the reason why there's bright white line, a uh, white line around the black hole there on the either uh, side of, uh, or either pole of uh, each magnet. Where you see the light is magnetism, where you don't see the light is you see the dielectricity. These interference patterns that make up the geomagnetic precession as they interlace between each other are necessitative. Um, same thing we have with regular waves on the ocean. Waves of what? Waves of water. They will interlace. They will become either constructive and make a larger wave, you know, waves out in the ocean. They'll actually make either a larger waves or if, depending on their interference pattern and frequency, they will actually uh, self-annihilate. Um, these same interference patterns in the magnetodielectric are exactly like that. So there are no actual lines of force. Like, There's a line out there and it's a force. It's magnetism. Magnetic lines of force. Well, that is a bullshit perceptual uh, brain fart due to correct observation, correct description, but incorrect conclusions. That's what humanity, and specifically scientists, and most scientists are not scientists, they're mathematicians, they get wrong. I observe it, I can reobserve it, these are my descriptions, and here's my BS explanation. Well, no, there are no lines of force. You're just, uh, you know, it's like saying a, a speed bump out on the road is a line of force. Well, I hit it, and my, my car gets a jolt of force. No, it is just a ripple a manifestation ripple in the field that makes up the pavement, right? It's like if you buckle the pavement, it's like, oh my god, there's a line of force. I hit it, my, my car jumped, and my cat screamed in the back seat. No, oh, it's all still the blacktop. <laughs> magnetism, of course, is the dielectric field. We only define magnetism by what it does, extrapolatively different from what the dielectric does. But magnetism is the manifestation of the loss of inertia that makes up the dielectric field as pertains to the magnet. A magnet is not really a magnet because as meant mostly magnetism. A magnet is only a magnet due to the field coherency, the non-point source a specific uh, incommensurability of field uh, coherency, i.e. geomagnetic precession coherency, that makes up that object, but it is mostly dielectric. The magnetism that we're fascinated by on a magnet is only uh, less than, well, it's really less than a quarter of the picture. A magnet is really a dielectric object, if we're going to call it something. It's like a, an advanced race of aliens. I was like, what is this? Well, you stupid human beings call it a magnet, thinking it's mostly magnetism. It's like, yeah, that's what it is. No, it's not. It's a dielectric object, which happens to have neat um, phenomena of magnetism. The dielectric is not palpably... Um, uh, what we think of in terms of magnetism when we play with magnets. And by the way, there's no such thing as magnetic acceleration. Uh, magnets are jumping towards one another as the force... That, no, that's dielectricity. That is a move towards counter space. That's uh, inertia and acceleration. When magnets accelerate towards one another, that is the opposite of magnetism. But anyway, there are no lines of force. This is a perceptual brain fart of human stupidity. Unfortunately, due to Faraday, who himself was a brilliant man, he made correct observations, he made uh, correct descriptions, and he was a very brilliant man, but his explanation has stuck ever since Faraday. They are not lines of force. Magnetism does not like, like there's lines like spaghetti. Like every magnet's got l force lines like spaghetti, like invisible spaghetti that are shooting out of the... No. <laughs> No. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever tickles your pickle, whatever makes you happy. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.